Hello and welcome to game number two for Ghost of Cup Americas, the finals of this Ghost of Cup Americas number three. And we will see Gamers University taking on Rat. And Gamers University is, uh, well, they need to force out a game number three if they still want to have a chance at that $500 prize because they are one game behind Rat Gaming, or Rat, sorry, she, uh, took game number one pretty convincingly, if I might add. And we're gonna see if this time it's gonna be different and if they can indeed force out a game number three or if Rat is gonna take a 2-0. And if you wanna find out more about uh, uh, sorry, about, uh, yeah, about Ghost Cup Americas, about how these two teams got themselves inside the finals, you can go to ghostgamers.net slash Dota 2. And you can, uh, you can find all the brackets there. And of course, all the sign up information. This is, by the way, free to sign for everybody, so maybe next time that. Goes a cup Americas comes around, you have yourself some a team with some friends, you can try to compete. Anyways, let's just see what these two teams are gonna be doing to try and get themselves Dogs. those five hundred dollars. We have got the Nyx and the Wisp and the Coddle and the Bat Rider being banned out. It will be the Dark Seal that gets picked up first. First pick going to the dire side this game. We've got ourselves uh well, a lot of heroes still in the pool that we might be seeing picked up there. Um, we have of course still got the Rubik. But uh, as long as, as far as previous games go, we have had a lot of games where the Nyx, or sorry, the Lifestealer was being banned out. We had a lot of games where the Lone Druid was being banned Ten out. Seconds remaining. So we're gonna see if they want an, either of those. I mean, Rubik and Shadow Demon are Five two heroes that are pretty remaining. standard to be seen picked up fairly early on, but do they really want to start off with two supports? Reserve time. Magnus. Now we have seen a Magnus before already and we've seen him also just go through bands and pick phase without being even given any attention but this time first pick up together with the Rubik still. I, I like it. It's a reverse polarity. Team fight is the name of the game for Gamers University and now that they know that they pick up the Lashrak. They don't want to be giving that away to Gamers University. Of course the Split Earth is great together with the Magnus. Now what I do want to point out is that they pick up a Lashrak while they know that there is a Rubik on the opposing team. And the thing about stealing the Split Earth from the Rubik, uh, on the Rubik from the Lashrak, is that the Split Earth on the Rubik is actually better than the Split Earth from the Lashrak because you don't have a cast point, meaning that your stun hits instantly without having to aim it, actually. So that's an interesting pickup. They also pick up the Life Stealer. Lashrak Life Stealer is a lane that Surprisingly, we see uh, we see sometimes er Five as earlier remaining. as well just having that open wound slowing down the uh, target, making sure that the Shrek can get a stun in, stun in perhaps. Could be a nice combination going there. As we have Gamers University to decide what hero they want to pick up together with the Magnus and a Rubik. I mean, do they want to pick up something like a Jakiro to make sure that they have something like... Um, like Magnus with first polarity, ice path, and then also the uh, Mechropire going through. Or do they want to have something like Alina with the Light Strike Array? I mean, you might not have the Shrak, but Light Strike Array is also uh, also a decent spell to have with that reverse polarity. Or do they want to have something that is totally separate from the reverse polarity and just have something that goes with themselves? Or or go for the Sven. We haven't seen a Sven at all today. How about that? Personally, I'm not too sad about that though. Yeah. Lena, Lena, yay! Two Lena Don't games in a Lina. row. Woohoo! So yeah, I did mention Lena already, of course, because of the combination with the Magnus. It's also great to have with the Rubik. I mean, Rubik can set up those light strike arrays from the Lena pretty solidly if there's good communication, which uh, we should assume there is. I mean, they're of course a team, professional team. So will be a, a nice, uh, nice zero to have on their side. And let's see what we're gonna see banned out from the side of Rat. I mean, if you look at the lineup of Gamers University, you see a potential mid laner, two probably supports, or potential off laner. So you're gonna be banning out carries. Radiant team ban. <coughs> That's basically the way, uh, the way it goes. The one that you wanna don't wanna be seen together with the Rubik and Alina. And we did see a Weaver early earlier so that's why they ban it out I mean Weaver you don't see it that often we saw a Weaver on the trial lane earlier today and it worked out great we have an anti-mage also being banned out as the Queen of Pink gets banned out by Gamers University I mean if you look at the lineup of Rat you see what's missing it's a mid laner and Queen of Pain is one of the most solid mid mids out there so you kind of want to just ban out her out sorry Puck also getting banned out there on the last solo lane and, and another time we see Puck banned out it's quite interesting because we've seen a lot of puck bans, but never a pickup. I mean, some games he was just utterly in ignored, and sometimes he's just uh, banned. 
Interesting to see. We're gonna see what last ban of that rat is gonna do. Is it gonna be another carry? Something like a uh, Phantom Lancer? Or something like a Gyrocopter? We've seen it before. It worked out then. Might not want to be facing that again. Gyrocopter, of course, was in a mid lane earlier and as well as a uh, solo Ten short lane. Remaining. So it might not be the ones that you want to be facing, but. You know, could all be potential uh, heroes remaining. for Games University. They have got a lot of options, though. I mean, even if you do ban out that Phantom Lancer or that Garacopter, there will always be something else, because there's just so many options. It will be a Phantom Lancer that gets banned out still. Let's see the last ban out coming from Games University. What hero do they not want to be facing in that mid lane? Earlier today we saw Storm Spirit. Didn't really work out though. I don't think it's actually going to be banned out. That wouldn't be a logical issue. Logical hero. It will be actually an Undying. Of course a hero that's great together with on a trial lane as well. Regardless of what you have in your mid lane. It's a good hero to have. We have seen him only picked up once though. And again the same story goes for him. That Undying is one of those heroes that were at least today for me. For the games that I've casted. Either ignored or banned, apart from once, apart from once he got picked up. There's still the Shadow Demon, so that's the logical support being picked up there. Shadow Demon, of course, a bit surprised that actually not banned, but you don't really know what your opponent is going to be taking. Mid lanes or supports or uh, jungles. But still Shadow Demon is a support that we have basically not missed today. He has been in almost all games that we've seen. And no surprise either, because he is such a good control hero. I mean, if there's someone going to be initiated on by the Rubik Ten or by the Lina, like for example, if there is an aggressive tri lane from either side, Five then, remaining. I mean, just having a disruption will make sure that Win that target is going to be safe. And the uh, vice versa as well. Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon stun or disruption, sorry, is great to set up for a split earth for the Lashrak. And one thing that is going to be working both ways, though, one thing that both teams have to be taking into account. Well, most likely Gamers University, though, or sorry, Rat. I mean, if Shadow Demon defensively disrupts a target, Lena can chain up her Light Strike Array on that disruption as well. I mean, normally you have a, you have got the Shrek Shadow Demon great combination because he can set up his stun, and it, I mean, Five it works. It works both ways. It works on both teams, doesn't matter which team it is. So defensive disruptions, they have to be really careful it's about if Lina's son is on cooldown already or not, and if they're actually uh, gonna be safe or not afterwards. Brewmaster is gonna be picked up, that's gonna be the mid lane that we have seen before as well, as we have gotten hard carry for Gamers University. They wanna be uh, taking the long road. With the Windrunner picked up as their off lane, Magnus probably then in the mid, and faces Void on a safe lane with a Rubik and a Lina defending him. That will probably be the lineup for Games University, and that is very, very safe, I guess, in a way. It's just making sure they have got team fight, they've got counter push with the Fate Bolt and the Power Shot. Dragon Slave also should not be underestimated, of course. And, um, yeah, they, they look pretty solid. At the same time, though, I mean, the team fight is there too for the Brewmaster. Lapis is going to be playing him. He will be probably going to take that into the mid lane. Will be Sifla playing the Life Stealer. Will be JRX playing the Leshrac. Following him is a Boogie. Is going to be playing the Shadow Demon with Spin playing the Dark Seer. So that is also the entire lineup of the Rat team. As for the Dire team, Radiant team, sorry, Games University Smash will be playing the Magnus. It will be Mihawk on the Windrunner. I will on the Faces Void. Masoku playing the Lina and last but not least is uh, Mystico playing the Rubik and they're gonna be finding each other in the jungle. Hello reunion. Open wounds to start things off with. Of course there's a lot of escape mechanisms. Oh open wounds there they go. But time walk is there. Escape mechanism. Nice shackle up on the track. But not enough follow up. There goes a clap. Rubik trouble. Nice strike array though. It's on two. And a nice telekinesis stuns up everybody of the Dio team but they can't go in. Gamers University needs to get away from this. Unless they can find themselves and open a nice distraction on the face of Void and this time walk is off cooldown. Nice cooler as well. Lapis gonna try to still force face of Void to walk himself out of that place. Disruption gonna save the life of Lapis in the meantime. Nobody going down just yet. And that's the horn sounding and, and face of Void he's saying, you know what, I'm not going back to base. I want or maybe he wants to go back to base. The battle begins. Because he's gonna miss last hits right now. He's gonna miss some farm because he has to go back to base. A nice a regen room picked up by the Brewmaster, so he doesn't get put in a disadvantage on the mid lane where he is probably gonna be up against that Magnus. Doing a pretty okay job. 
he doesn't have anything. Is the, oh, I'm so used to seeing something else under the arm of a brewmaster that I was surprised to see the normal thing. thing. Awkward. Yeah. So we're gonna have a trail in the top lane with Lifestealer already going there together with the Shadow Demon and the little Shrek, and they will be up against a solo Windrunner, so she should be fine. Wow, that bow! Is that the new bow? I think so. No, it's not the new bow. It looks so big. That's what she said. Sorry, I. And it's t It's late. It's late. It's like 3 a.m. We're not for a long time. So, no first blood with that one. Uh, with that initiate or that encounter in the jungle. So we're gonna see where the first blood's hitting then, because it's not gonna be on the bottom lane, because there's no hero there from uh, the dire side because he's uh, farming in the jungle. It's been on a dark sea. So decided, you know what, I can't get anything done there anyway, so why not just go inside the jungle? And I do think that we're gonna see uh, the winter are also roaming around because he can't really do anything on the top lane either. So it's gonna be very safe. So that means that this mid lane is gonna be the lane where it's all happening. Of course, the winter has been scouted out a lot, a lot already. And he's gonna be the target here of a spin with the ion shell. Windrunner has no windrun. He picked up Shackle level one. They know that because she had that earlier. There it goes. Mihawk trying to get himself away. Telekinesis helping out. Mihawk still able to get himself away for now. A pistol chasing him down. There goes an iron shell score towards the tower and he backs off. Doesn't want to get that kill and or at least doesn't want to give his life for that kill. I don't blame him. Would miss too much of this mid lane. Too much of the farm. It was if it was anybody else, then he would have given his life, but not the brewmaster. At least not uh, when you have the chance of also not getting it. Invisibility rune being uh, dropped down by uh, the gods of Dota 2. The wind runner is going to use it to get some free experience on the top lane, making sure that she can at least get that wind run to have some sort of escape mechanism. I mean, she picked up the shackle, of course, with an initiation. It's it's great to have it works out, etc. But it's just um, you've been burned. It's not ideal for the start of the game, actually. That's too bad. Oh, Windrunner. They know that she picked up the invisibility room. They got a sentry where they placed it. They see all the Shrek's on. It's gonna miss! Whoa, close. No cigar. And that's, of course, uh, that ward right there. P scouting it out. Scouting out the rune. It's like this rune. This ward is scouting out the bottom rune. Leaving on the meantime level 2. We can of course compare the Phases Void to uh, the top lane life stealer. Phases Void so far 18 for 10 with Sifla being on 19 for 6 so very even on last hits. So far no real difference. The real difference will come uh, depending on who is going to leave the lane first. I mean normally when you're up against, uh, or when you are a Phases Void and you're up against a solo lane you want to get with your level 6 Chronosphere. You want to get a kill with that. So we're going to see if this Phases Void is actually going to be able to do that. Lifestealer doesn't have one of those level 6 abilities, but is ready earlier to fight than the Faces Void is. In the meantime, these two heroes also are heroes that want to try to do something with their level 6 ulti. 12 for 4 in the meantime on the Brewmaster, with Smash being on 11 for 3. So once again, very even lane. And I do think we won't be able to see our first blood unless more people are gonna roam around like these two. I mean, there's a disruption and a split earth. That could be a good setup, but they're gonna just go for the rune. For the rune, and now also being scouted out by the Windrunner. And she knows exactly where they are, so that's not gonna be coming as a surprise. Has to be careful though. Now that he's, she's being scouted out, they know exactly that they're also not gonna be safe there anymore, at least. Not gonna be um, having a uh, surprise pickup out there anymore. Talking about pickup, looks like uh, we. Saw so Rubik looking for a pickup, looking for telekinesis, won't be able to find it though. In the meantime, Winterrunner is going to walk back, sees that they're attack. still there, it's daytime, so the vision is all there still. And they actually place a ward there, and they're just going to go aggressive, going to go for the tower. Well, I say aggressive, but they're going to go for aggression on the tower. Edict helping out, even though it's only level 1, fortification being used for that one. In the meantime, another shockwave, it's on the Brewmaster, still no level 6s, as we do have a Rubik coming in from the side, has got a telekinesis ready, and on this side there is no dire ward, so this could be our first blood right here. There they go, no level 6 just yet, leading a light strike away, but it missed, Skewer still hits, trying to get him, more right clicks needed, more heroes needed, clap, shockwave though, gets the kill, smash picks it up. Oh no, I can only do that joke once, right, can't I? Saying that smash smash your stuff. Oh my god, I just thought of something brilliant. Smash should play Ogre Magi, because I believe that he says, me smash. Okay, you know, that's the result of being of being tired. I apologize. It happens. 
Kind of mind is up on the faceless void. Now that will be something that will be a difference between that life stealer and that faceless void. Meaning more faces more gold for faceless void, more experience also. Though at the same time, of course, the tower still went down and it was actually Lashrek that picked up the gold for that. So no not for the life stealer, but still some extra gold going the way of the dire team might make a difference uh, at some point, depending on how fast the towers are gonna go down on the other side so far. Boots picked up by the Rubik level two for now. I mean if you look at the levels, there's still a lot of supports level two. Dyer's bottom tower Even with uh, the kills going the way of Gamers University, they are the one that have two level twos with only one level two up on the side of Rat, which is of course a result of more roaming around that they did than uh, their opponent team. Uh, Shadow Demon is gonna see if he can find the six minute rune, which he does, haste rune, being reserved. They know it's there and they're gonna reserve it for the brewmaster who's gonna be able to pick it up. He's gonna be denying it though, but no, can't do. And that's gonna be a soul catcher on there. Shackle doesn't light. Now Windrun has to be used. Clap is still there. Lashrak's on gun hit as well. And that's a kill. Going the way of a rat. Bit too risky there. Going in. Well knowing that there would be a disruption ready. And the haste rune is of course not something to be messed with. Level 6 now also up on the Brewmaster. Again, getting that advantage now in the mid lane. Helps out level 7 on the Magnus though. The time that Brewmaster was away. Of course he was the one that actually died. Gave Magnus that slight edge. And I believe he even got solo experience for that, considering that the Rubik was too far away. I'm not 100% sure though, unfortunately. That also happens. As in, that I'm not 100% sure. Facebook's being picked up by the Brewmaster. We have four heroes mid from, from Rat, by the way. That's quite excessive. But it looks like they are gonna go for some 5 Mandota, or at least for Mandota in this case, having their life sealer still farm and try to force out a team fight. I mean, they have got the Brewmaster. Maybe they can try to shut down the Faces Void. If they can manage that, that would be a good pickup. There's also actually four heroes on the mid lane from Gamers University. Here goes the Darkseer by himself. Faces Void has got, of course, the Chronosphere. No, 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 no. Iron Shell still doing some damage, he still has a salve as well, they know that he, they can go for him, there they come, Disruption is gonna start things off, he knows he has to get away right now, where's the time walk, where's the time walk, there's the time walk, and what is he gonna do now? Um, yeah. Yeah, so that was actually happening at the same time as Lifestealer went down on the top lane. So that's a fairly even trade, Lifestealer was, uh, I have to say, Lifestealer was slightly overextending, I mean he was here. Not really sure what he was thinking, but that's the wrong side of the map for him. Radiance this famous void was trying to get himself attack. home. In the meantime, tower is going to be the result for uh, the team of the Dire, which is more than the Radiants are getting because they're not getting anything right now. Maybe they can try to force down the tier 1 middle, but it looks like there's going to be enough time for Rat to defend this. They actually still have the split even though there's no mana. Now there's mana. I have four stick charges. Dyer's Question is if they actually want to try to force this. Doesn't look like it. They just want to back off. Took what they can get and then back off. At least they got the carry of their opponent team. They're behind on towers though, and that's going to be something that you're going to, of course, be having when you're with the Lashrek and your opponent team. That edict, even though not very high level, it definitely helps out so much. This is the battle of the hard carries by the looks of it. So I hope you're ready for a game that might last for a while because if these two teams are gonna be exchanging kills like they have been, even though it's not that that big I mean there's two versus two. I know. I'm exaggerating. But if these two teams are gonna be um doing about the same rotations that they have been doing, looking for the same type of fights, it might be uh might be fairly even for a long time. <laughs> depending on where they're actually finding the fight and of course how good the ultimates are I mean this reverse polarity is gonna be meaning a lot in the team fights we still haven't seen the split the reverse polarity was used to kill off the life stealer take a look at the gold graph real quick it's in favor of rat 3k gold and that's no surprise there are two towers ahead so that's a big difference and in, in total that is actually 3k gold if you count the last hits with that so that is exactly that we have got the experience graph also in their favor Mostly because there's been just more roaming around from Gamers University than there has been from Rat. The tower is still not down. So the first tower that they want to take down, Invisibility Rune on the Magnus, though, that could change that. A free reverse polarity. If he gets a good position in, that might be 
everything that they need to get a tower because they need some towers I mean I'm I'm, I'm bitching about oh I'm complaining about towers but um, I mean that's very important for the support specifically because that's how they can get their core items up and if you're gonna be having a lot of team fights or if teams are looking for those team fights and those core items are gonna mean a, a lot they're gonna need those bracers. They're gonna need that mechanism. They're gonna. They're just gonna need that gold. It's very simple. And of course, the longer the game goes on, the more important those supports get. So having your support item, support core items up faster than the opponent team means means just means the world. But so far, no can do. We do have Magnus still building towards his blink dagger. Has got 1,700 gold, so is uh, pretty close by. To be fair. Brewmaster in the meantime also probably wants to have his blink dagger. He's at 1600 gold, so still going fairly even. In the meantime, the net worth charts say that the uh, life stealer is still almost on par with the Faces Void. Faces Void is actually a bit behind here, surprisingly, as he has got, of course, the hand of uh, Midas, which should put him ahead. But life stealer is, uh, oh, he is also having the hand of Midas. Thank you for for uh, proving that point. He's got 1700 gold in his inventory. A lot of blinks coming out of the map. Holy cow! People just sounding very smoked, seeing if someone comes to farm the bottom lane. Brewmaster being there in the meantime. Looks like they're waiting for someone to farm the top lane. Surprise! Brewmaster, yeah, level 9. He's gonna just wait and see if someone's coming. Now finds the face's void by himself. Is he gonna go there though? He knows there are so many people missing from the map. Doesn't want to risk it. Invisibility rune activated by the Magnus. He's of course his own. Picks up the regen rune. Four heroes on the top lane. The only one that's not there is the uh, the brewmaster, who's not getting anything done. He's just—I mean—he really, really doesn't want to die right now because if he dies now, he loses the money for a blink, and he runs—he wants that blink bad. And imagine this: if there was a tower down right now, this Magnus would have almost had a blink as well. Brewmaster harassing the face of Void slightly. Who can't really harass back because if you're going on a man fight with the brewmaster, you can go for an ulti and you don't want to waste your own ulti. Really, because you don't know, you, you probably couldn't kill him anyway. And both teams really even once again. I mean, yeah, this is this is like I mean we've seen a lot of games this or we didn't see that many games actually. We don't see that many games lately, or at least I don't unfortunately with being a uh, moving house and stuff but we've seen uh, quite a few games this week still that have had a lot of anti-mage versus phantom lancer games and that's all fun and stuff and, and i mean late game it does make for some pretty epic team fights pretty epic situations Dyer's middle tower but is under attack. Yeah, Dyer's structures are the the w the path that it leads up towards, uh, as in uh, this path, what we see right here, is not that exciting. So that's why um, that's why we see this. First stuff being built up by uh, the Windrunner, or first headers actually. Me mechanism being built by her then. Blink dagger up on the magnet. The blink dagger up on the brewmaster also, by the way. So both of those have them. Now they just want to have level 11, which Brewmaster is slightly further towards. Track level 5, Shadrima level 6. Quick look at the experience graph. Or hero level graph, because it's not a hero level chart. No graph. Yeah, graph. We see, uh, we see the level difference. I mean, we have the track lowest, but they also have the highest. So it, uh, it ends out being, uh, well, in their favor, pretty a lot, quite a lot in their favor, actually. This, this is the graph. And um, it mostly comes from, of course, the Brewmaster and the um, the Life Stealer being the high level. Life Stealer free from definitely helps. He's got himself an armlet as well. Faces Void in the meantime, still building towards the battle fear. This is what I said earlier. Life Stealer is just ready way earlier for uh, for team fights, and he's actually stuck inside the Brewmaster right now. So we're gonna see them trying to go for the team fight. But the the thing is, he can just jump in, and then there will be Life Stealer jumping out, smash, trouble, screw himself away. Actually, doesn't get up, up to the high ground. Does pop it in his room. Will be able to stay alive, and that's gonna be a Laguna Blade also being used. I didn't see on who, but nobody is really that low. But they are gonna be taken down to tier one tower. 
And there's still a uh, Bruling chasing down Smash. He was actually very lucky that he had that Invis rune right there. Then we put up a Tornado Power Shot to try to chase him down. Brewmaster actually taking a lot of damage there. We'll be surged forward. We'll be saving. Or saved, rather. And now with Brewmaster's ulti off cooldown, they are the ones that are in favor of the team fight, so they will be trying to take a tower. And they should be able to take it. And they are. There we go. First tower going down to the dire side. They can't really force out anything more. I mean, Magnus is not that high of HP right now. Uh, for the people wondering, this is game number two of the uh, finals for Ghost Cup America. We have got ourselves Gamers University Peru. Whoa, big stack. Taking on Rat. If you want to find out more about the brackets, more about uh, how these teams got to these finals, you can go to GhostGamers on that slash Dota 2, and there's just links on the front page. You can find it. You should be able to. And... What else? Oh, yeah! Because these teams are fighting for monies, that's what they're fighting for, and of course the title, but uh, their winner gets $500 with the second prize getting $300, so they desperately want uh, want that $500 to be able to split it up in evenly $100 per person, which is of course nice for just uh, one weekend of Dota. I mean, who doesn't want to get paid for just playing a game that he loves, right? But he does. They're just gonna be able to clean out this crap with this quick wave. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ooh, smoke up. They are all five smoked up. Life stealer in there as well, or at least around there. Are they gonna go for Roshan? Yes, they are. Sentry ward just in case. Doesn't look like there's anything here that will make the radiant aware that something like this is happening. Apart from the fact that everybody is missing Dyer's from the map. Top tower is under attack. Which is now obvious. Exclamation marks coming out. Illusion rune, Lina doesn't know how close she is to dying. Now realizing something's going on. They're not gonna be in time though. Roshan will drop and it will be Sifla picking up the ages and they're gonna try to fight a fight perhaps. They have got the split up against too soon. 38 seconds actually. We still haven't really seen a chronosphere. Quite surprising. The first priority we have seen, but no. you'd expect more team fights. Let's track some. Not hitting anything. Not even creeps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Happens. Top tower In the meantime, top lane getting pressured slightly. No deny ready. No deny possible. There's yet. Oh, Shadow Demon by himself. Now more supports coming in, and that will be Mihawk having to back off. The Monarch Purge is still there, though. Here comes Sifla as well. He's got open wounds there. Shackle doesn't latch, and that's Windrunner going down. Empty. In the meantime, Rubik gonna be able to stay alive. Brewmaster not though. I mean, this is a good trade for Gamers University. They lost their solo lane Windrunner, but they picked up a Brewmaster that actually has his OTR off cooldown again. And it was, more importantly, Faces Void that picks up the kill. Now I have to say it was also Lifestealer picking up the other kill, so they're even again. But um, that is pretty important, and they are gonna pick up a tower as well. Tower gets shared money though. I will probably didn't wanna aim for that one. And he kind of has to be on the bottom lane now, Dyer's top lane now as well, because he needs to help attack. force his back. Hello. They seem to be doing fine without him, actually. Battle Fury complete upon the Phase's Void as well. So we have the armor up on the Life Stealer. And 3100 gold, of course, has to be set. So what's it gonna be? A Desolator? MKB? Can all work. Taking his time. 3300 gold or maybe a heart. Could be a potential hit pick up as well. Four heroes soon again mid. This is three versus three. Six kills in 20 minutes. I don't think it's been this slow the entire day. Oh yeah, in my whole story about how, um, about how, um, Dyer's top tower is under how this was game number two and everything. I didn't even say Dyer's it was going one game up. A rat is one game up. So g if Gamers University want to win this, they need to force out a game number three. They need to win this. And then win another one afterwards. But for Red, they only need to win one more before they can take home that $500. Not bad. 
mechanism up on the wind runner, so we'll be having that one next time. We have got a ghost after being built up by the Lina, most likely able to stay alive against a life sealer is pretty important. Four staff could be a nice one as well, but ghost after is a bit cheaper in that sense. And both teams are just evading each other, well, apart from now. Coming towards the bottom lane. Thou shalt not mess with our towers. Towers are even again, by the way. As the gold graph is also dropping back to even experience graph, 2k difference is really nothing 20 minutes into the game. Power shots, shock waves. There is a split off, of course, it's just like there is a reverse polarity. The question is who uses it first? The one that uses it at first is probably not at the advantage. Well, that's a lot of damage going towards the life seal, but he's gonna be fine. 43 on a gold, just a happy bunny. And he jumps himself inside the brewmaster. Brewmaster there for saying, I want to initiate on this. And they, of course, are gonna go jump on Smash again. Last time they almost got him down as well. Shockwave doing what he can. There goes Soulcatcher, hits up on Smash. Decided to change their mind. In the meantime, it is uh, Faces Void that decides to farm mid. Meaning that there's four versus five right here. And this is their perfect opportunity to go and smash. Gonna get smashed. Here it goes, four staff forward and screw away. Open Wounds now up on the Rubik, trying to get himself out. Ghost after being used, he actually stole the Open Wounds. Get stunned up, vacuum back in, Luna stun helping out, Lina rather, shockwave going through as there's now a fight between the tier 1 and the tier 3. Tier 2 and the tier 3, and now the tier 2 actually goes down, so that's at least something they get back, or at last they want to go for this Fatal Void coming in. on still hitting though, is he gonna jump forward, is he gonna try to go for this? Doesn't want to. Tower's still standing though, and that's the most important thing for now. No kills being done here, 3 for st 3 still. Radiant's Tower gets denied actually. Nice one for the Lena. We used the force staff, of course, the safe smash. We wasn't able to use the reverse polarity. And of course, in its in the meantime, in the time that that all happened, uh, it was a period there was a period of time when Faces Void was still farming, and there were actually five euros standing around there for Rat, and that works in favor of Games University, of course. Let's see if they can make something happen themselves. They do know that the Brewmaster split is on cooldown. And they still have all their ultimates. But then again, they're up against the Darkseer wall. Actually, Darkseer wall on cooldown as well. Everything on cooldown. There goes the mischance from the side. Here also comes Lifestealer. Who indeed is gonna go for a heart. Picked up the Reaver there. And they're not gonna go for this again. Unless they're just gonna wait for the next creep wave. But it seems that they're gonna be doing that. Okay, that was an awkward power shot, but it's okay. Magnus looking for a chance to go for a reverse player. He just needs the vision. It's nighttime though. It's very hard, very risky to jump himself in there. Power shot will get some vision. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Cleaning out some of the towers. Here comes that uh, life zero open wounds up on the face of void. Time walk away. And that's another rage being stolen this time. Tower slowly but steadily going down. Five heroes versus five heroes. Who cares about middle and top lane? Bottom lane is where it's at. Apparently. Power shots hitting left and right, but actually hitting nothing at all. There's still chronospheres. There's still. Oh, still shackles, and there's a stun, and that's a chronosphere. Laguna Blade up on the life seeker, but he raged. Still, is there more? Life Stealer is still alive. Disruption helping out. There goes the first player. Here's some two. Shark going down. That's a channel demon down. That's a Life Stealer going down as well. Dark Seer walls everywhere. A spin. Lands his last vacuum before surging himself up. Smash getting forced off into safety as well. Now his telekinesis. He's got his split though. He's got his split. He lands a clap. Kills off Smash. He got a kill for Bora as well. Next, Life Stealer was able to buy back. Needing to be in this fight now. Life Stealer for Faces Void has to get himself out. This fight is over for them. They might not have totally lost the fight, but they didn't win the fight either. It is 5 for 5, so the kills are still even. The only win that they got was that the Lifestealer was forced to buy back. That's actually a big win, to be fair. They, he spun a lot of gold in that. So that is, uh, that is quite nice. But then again, he did end up um, getting a kill. That's also nice. 
take a quick look at the net worth life or yeah with life center buying back that actually puts uh phases void quite heavily in favor of that he got himself a bkv as well now so it's doing pretty nicely for himself as we have got five euros going towards mid lane surprise this time from red and they have got uh, of course also the dark seer coming back in soon as well spin coming in from the side Edict, want to try to get some harassment up on the tier 2 tower? There is no fortification up for the team. I need to drink some water because I'm struggling too much, but he wants to blink in, he wants to clap, he wants to split, he wants to go for smash. Nice score towards the tower, there goes the split still though, smash in trouble, gets forced up into safety. Gets stunned up still though, will go down probably, or maybe not, Lena stun helping out. And he's able to get himself out into safety. And nobody ends up dying, and it's still a Brewmaster split being used. Chronosphere is off cooldown again. Shackle! Letches! Life stealer to a tree. This should be him going down. Disruption trying to help out. Chronosphere is gonna hit there, and it's gonna be Sifla that he wants. BKB activated. Thou shall not interrupt me. Killing off this life stealer. One more hit needed. Armored toggle going through. One more hit. The reverse player to be used. They should be able to get him. They get him indeed. A shadow even Rubik and goes down as well. No dark seer getting shackled up. Goes down as well. Three for one. So far, double kill going the way of Ivo, and they are gonna go forward. Seeing if they can do something. Finally, we have got ourselves those fights that we were waiting for. That is what should happen at this stage of the game, or at least when you think your carries are ready to be taking those fights or when you're gonna be forced to be taking those fights and you have got both a lineup that can actually take those fights then you have these fights i know i'm saying that a lot i'm gonna drink some water while we wait for fights dyer's middle tower is under attack okay they're not gonna fight but they did take down the tier 2 tower second one in the game on the side of the Dyer, so on the side of Rat, means that there's now one tower in favor of Gamers University. We do also have the experience graph going in their favor again. And we've got the uh, gold going in their favor, but again, I mean 2k. 2k is, is nothing. 25 minutes into the game, it's really nothing whatsoever. Roshan is going to be up again shortly, that's going to be big. Both teams will want to have that, they don't want to give it away. Lifestealer could really use one. So he's been spending a lot of gold dying. He has got the heart of the the recipe of the heart though, but he just needs still his uh, vitality booster as faces void. He's got 2100 gold. He's really pulling ahead on that worth because of that life stealer just dying now. Now twice in a row. He's died three times. He's been only in two kills of the six so far. And uh, of course we can compare that to the life stealer who has only died once and it's been in six out of the eight kills. Quite the difference. Yes, I know. I keep checking the stats. I will actually have this one up so that people who just joined can see who killed or who killed how many, who died, how much. That's the way that you say it. But yeah, both teams really know that the Roshan is the 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 one that's gonna mean the difference right now. But both don't wanna be the one the first one to initiate because if you are the first one to initiate, you will be the one to be getting caught by the opponent's team fight. So it's it's really a balance. When do you think you can go in? You really if I mean, if, imagine if you're a Gamers University, you've got a Chronosphere and a Reverse Polarity. Both work very well if everything is grouped up. So you need to wait until your opponent is in the Roche Pit and then you can, and then you can go. On the other side, we have Rat that has a Dark Sea Wall and a Vacuum. And at the same time, an Infest and a Blink and a Clap or AoE stuff as well. You want to have your team or your opponent team to be all clumped up in the Roche Pit. But that is um, not going to be the case for either team right now because both are waiting for the other to go in. Even though there is only one ward really at the Roche Pit, which is a Radiant one just placed. They just don't want to be uh, forcing out anything. In the meantime though, if you look at this, I mean, we see Lifestealer trying to farm some of the Ancients. Yeah, but that's the only one that's actually farming. Now also um, Brewmaster some. But this entire jungle is being farmed by Gamers University. So that's quite, uh, quite the difference there. And they're actually going to go for this. They miss their windrunner though. This could be trouble if they go 5 or 5. Oh, whoa, blink in. Skewer towards the rest of the team. And a force up. What a long skewer. And the sh oh, from the side. Faces Void gonna be able to pick up the Shadow Demon Telekinesis there on the Brewmaster. He does have a split though. And he blinks in. He does split. Tries to go for the BKB still up on Ivo. They did get the Shadow Demon, but that's it. They lose their Rubik. And that is not something that you want to be seeing. Jumping in on the life stealer with losing two of your supports and only getting one support and you're in the way in return <clears throat> Tornado now up on the face of void. He should be able to get away still though. He has of course got the time walk It's gonna be fine shockwave still going through sending them on their way might be uh, the opening the ferocious that they needed 
Looks like it is indeed the case. Powershot will scout out that they're doing that though, but the reverse polarity is on cooldown. They can't really do anything against it. Looks like Magnus is going to be going for a refresher orb though. Wanting to have, of course, two of those reverse polarities. Always have a chance to. Who really wants to go for this? First halves, weak daggers. Rochev will still die though, and of course life's in a priest of the ages, and his heart is complete, he is back to being a happy bunny. <clears throat> we go steps are up on the Lina, able to stay alive against that life seeder as set, I believe. We go steps are up on the Rubik for the same reason. Windrunner has got herself four staff and a mechanism. Radiance top tower has been denied. Pretty standard items all with uh, the face of void actually going for a butterfly. Because of, of course the evasion from the butterfly works together with the backtrack, which is quite nice to have. Uh, at the same time, it does will it will force life to pick up an MKB, and with the way he's farming, he might actually have it earlier than uh, the butterfly is completed up on the up on the faces void. We'll see if he's actually able to do that. Nine to eight, one kill in favor of Gamers University. Doesn't feel that way though. Not after the last rush fight. Faces Void feeling safe farming here. I mean, this is on the wrong side of the map, but he's got himself a Chronosphere, so he feels pretty safe. I have to say, I haven't really been seeing Rubik stealing a lot of impressive stuff. But that might be me. I've got a messy brain, so I might just have missed it. Take a look at the gold per minute. Wow. Faces Void definitely uh, pulling ahead here. 30 gold per minute, uh, sorry, uh, 60 gold per minute higher almost. Dyer's top tower With life of course. Attack. I mean, the difference is still, yes, the ages. It's pretty it's pretty good to have. The first polarity is up again. Chronosphere is up again. Can't be trouble. In the meantime, there's people pushing top. Tier 2 tower going down. There's Dyer's people pushing bottom. bottom. Oh, Faces Void. He is being ballsy. Tier 3 tower is gonna be his uh, goal. And he is by himself. There is no there is a fortification, but it seems like they're not noticing. They're sticking around. Now they know there's exclamation mark pings coming out. Fortification goes through. Where's the TPs though? No TPs still. The face of void decides, you know what? No TPs. I'm gonna go in again. Now there's TPs. Forcing TPs was his goal. Successfully done. And that's the last tier two tower going down. Still, and there is also still a half. I mean, the tower is, is even below half HP. TP out from that uh, Shadow Demon, and they're looking for the smoke for some strays. Let's see if they can find this Brewmaster. Oh, this is risky for him. There goes the Telekinesis, there goes the Shackle positioning as well, and Laguna Blade, and everything, and he dies very quickly. Never touch the stuff. You weren't so okay. damn dead, I'd shoot you again. Is he just saying that he will never get touch the stuff again, that he will never get drunk again? <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, but I think someone's asking how much last hit Ivo has. Ah, oh, that's the wrong carry. Uh, Ivo has got 233 last hits. He's doing quite, quite nice. I mean, I mean compared to the life he is uh, he's ahead, obviously. By about 50 last hits. So that's definitely helping out quite a bit. That's the amount of lasses, there we go. My god, I can read Spanish. Yeah. I think so. Again, all mid. Do you want to take the sea fight again? I mean, the one and the shockwave are still there. Oh, pipe goes up. They really want to have this, and I don't even have the brewmaster there. This is a very early pipe or a misclick from spin. There goes the tower still. Last year, two tower standing on the map. In general. Aghanim's completed up on the brew. They want to take this. Open wounds. And a blink in. Four staff forward. 
Oh, four stock backwards. Vacuum back in. Let's try some missing. We're first player. TSL 3. Now, Shockwave going through. Is it going to be a score? Disruption is there first. And that is a Chronosphere. And that's bashing stuff on Sifla. Sifla is going to be the one to go down. Or is he? That's an Aegis going down. Now, I will trouble. Pops his BKB. Light Strike Array still hit. Sifla backing out. And the buyback from the Magnus who still died there is the first Flurkey of course being used. And he doesn't have his refresher just yet. And it's also the split being used. Dark Sphere Wolves multiples being used. And that's them backing off. They use everything. Butterfly of course also up on there. 3800 gold up on the life studio. Probably wants to go for an MKB next. Let's see if we can find some new items here. Got the Windrunner actually also picking up a, um, a Demon Sage. Might be going for an MKB herself. Wouldn't be a bad item up on her, to be fair. They need a kind of a semi carry. I Meaning on the opponents in the team, they have the Brewmaster as the semi carry. The Darks here there as well. So it could definitely help out. Four staffs, three four staffs up on the radiant side. No four staffs up on the dire side. So that one four staff was actually a uh, a mistake four staff. To be fair, I mean that that shouldn't have happened. He got four staff back inside the fight. Still didn't die though, or at least Rubik didn't. That's the one I'm talking about. They're gonna be all top. There's no. Oh, there is a reverse polarity again. And there's also Chronosphere. Thirty seconds for Boomaster's ultimate. Tower, dead. One more hit. There we go. Time walk away. Or time walk forward, rather. That's trouble. Where's the Chronosphere? Is he gonna go for this? Yes, hits on two. He's just gonna walk away with this, though. Or is he gonna be able to get a kill? Disruption gonna help out. I'm not sure what Eyeball was thinking about doing there. Reverse polarity. It's a two-sharp by going through. And it's Shadow Demon that goes down first. Darks here. Will dry second. Faces Void Tower. Drops as he was, like, indecisive about what he was gonna do. Sifla now looking for a target. Wants to go for the Windrunner as we hear Laguna Blade on the back side of things. But that will be the rest getting away. Should be getting away. Rubik himself, though, still around here. Has got the four staff. Has got 2k gold in his inventory. And a blink up on the high ground from the pits because he picked up the gem of true sight. And standing next to a sentry ward. Useful. Goldcraft. I mean, still, I mean, it's worth 38 minutes into this game, right? So, 5k gold is really nothing. Really nothing whatsoever. Experience graph, also nothing. Gamers University is in favor on both. But it doesn't feel like that makes any difference right now. I mean, they did pick up the tier 3 tower, which makes a bit of a difference. So, there's now a naked barracks heading around in case they go there again. And we saw how fast it went down when the when the face of Void was just bashing him. I really don't know. What was the face of Void doing? Like, this was his chronosphere, right? No, it's an egg, but you know, you wanna know what I mean. There was someone standing here, there was someone standing here. It was a brewmaster and the and the life zero, so he probably couldn't kill either of them. But he just went back da -da 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 and then his BKB ran out, he got stunned and he died. I mean it was just awkward to watch. So we have the refresher orb recipe being picked up, so we'll be having it almost. <laughs> Almost, we shall have multiple reverse polarities. Something that seems to be something that Gamers University kind of need to have to have a slight edge over the team fight of their opponent team. I mean, the Dragonims actually works out great for that Brewmaster. Double damage. Ghost Scepter also upon the Shrek is going for a BKB. Of course, the life stealer. MKB indeed it is. Need to do something against those butterflies. No surprise there. And the rest of the items we already saw with the blast now also up on the brewmaster. And they were just waiting for people to come. And they are coming. They're in the mid lane. Looking to be going uh, to looking to be going in. I would like my new camera work. I can't click stuff when I'm doing that. That's a bit annoying. I wish I could click stuff when doing that. When doing this. Flying around the map. Oh, I will. 
3k gold. He needs to, of course, have a buyback ready. That's gonna be more and more important. Having a buyback to be able to do something. Let's see what he's gonna buy. Gonna be an MKB for himself as well, by the looks of it. No. There. Ah, smoke. It's not roach time yet, is it? Yes, it is. It is roach time. And that's why they see these, uh, the smoke is here. They need to kill off one or two heroes of the opponent team and then they can do it. Oh, finding the faces void. Jackpot. Can they get him? Lashrax done. Gonna hit. No BKB being used. The faces void now pops a BKB, but it's too late. Chronos fears of it. And he goes down. No surprise there. Locked inside his own team there as well. Vacuum of first player still goes out. There goes Smash. Down he goes. Might not be even Roshan, might be Barracks if you look at this one here as Rubik is twirled up into the sky but will probably drop there as well. The sun goes through and that's gonna be a kill. Iron Shell's doing all the work. And they don't have the creep wave though, the creep wave is all the way pushed out. The Shrek is already picking it up. And that is lack of wards from Games University. And may I just remind you once again that this is one game in favor of Red already. So if they would win this game, they would actually be the victors. Victors? Be the winners of Ghost of Cup America's number three. Raging, taking down the tower. The structures create more illusions of yourself. It's always good. Fortification going through. In the meantime, though, on the top lane, it is uh, Mihawk that is fighting together with Spin. He will be forced back, though. Tier 3 tower still drops. As Lina might be trying to do something here. Gets the Laguna Blade up on the Shadow Demon. Forced off herself away again, but I uh, need to be careful. Barracks drop, and they actually back off. It's far from over just yet. Far from over, but you just saw it can go so fast. One bad positioning. Is all it takes. One bad fight is all it takes. Regeneration. Now we do have actually no MKB. It's the Deadless that's complete up on the faces for it. And he went all in. No bad act for him. And they want to get Roshan. They have got the Chronosphere. They have got a reverse polarity as well as a refresh orb. They're ready for this. Bring it, they say. Reverse polarity number one gets down two. Can they get it? Reverse polarity number two is incoming soon. Can they get it? There goes the Lashrax on. It will be another reverse polarity right there. Brewmaster will be the first one to die. Nice Chronosphere. That is Life Seer and Dark Seer and Rubik going down as well as the Lashrax and the Windrunner. Heroes dropping on all sides. Buybacks dropping on all sides. All five heroes dead on the side of Rat. With three heroes of them buying back. And they're not even gonna go for that, they need to back off. These buybacks are just insane. But that, those reverse polarities were more insane than those buybacks. That was a pretty steep team fight from Games University. Just those buybacks. They will make sure that Rat will still get the ages. They had the gold, they used the gold gem. They are just leaving on the floor, who cares about a gem? Okay, let's try cares about the gem. Top tower is under attack. But that is gonna be uh, that's gonna be it. And the split is still up. I mean, they got him down before the split happened. So that's a big thing for them. And they don't have a reverse polarity. They don't have a chronosphere for another 30 seconds. Sorry, 40 seconds. And reverse polarity for another 40 seconds as well as, of course, 20 seconds until Magnus is back up in general. So they're just gonna try to go for this. They still have a buyback on the faces void though. So that's something that they should be happy about. Cheese up on the Brewmaster, ages up on the Life Seer. This could be trouble for Gamers University. That team fight. Everybody back off again. And that is indeed reverse polarity back up. Just one though, another mi minute for another reverse polarity. Chronosphere is back up again as well. They know what they're pushing into, but they, they feel confident. They have got an agent and they've got a cheese. They've got basically seven heroes. Up against five. Iron Shell's pushing down the middle lane. Just with illusions though, the real one is right there. Spin doesn't want to miss a beat of this fight that's coming, if it's coming. Face is void though, not there. Now, now there. That's gonna be its our go down corner sphere. It's on only creeps and boogie and spin. That's already one down. The Shrek's done not hitting because BKB is there. That goes the score. 
Reverse polarity only on spin though. That is one open wounds up on the face of Void. He's already used his BKB. He needs a time walk away. Gets forced out now. Time walks. Lashrak's not hitting anymore. There's a, the Lush, or the Mac is also trying to get himself away. In the meantime, the split went down on the Brewmaster. Who's gonna get a stun up on the Lena, but won't be trying to chase that down. The Shrek's not missing once more. Tier 4 tower already dead with tier 3 route of force half away from the Rubik. Radiance and jumps himself inside the cliff. There's only the Shadow Demon left dead. Darkseer has fallen. Back in, in the game already. So we'll see Bob back. Wants it to be here. And Rubik has got himself edict. Nice one to have, to be fair, in a team fight like this. And of course, it's also damage that goes through rage, so pretty nice against the lifesteader as well, especially if he's the only one there, which might be the case just now. Telekinesis is gonna be there. Fade Bolt as well. There goes the rage. It is indeed going through. We have got a reverse polarity. It's up on three. And are there people actually dying from that? Yes, there are. Lashrak already going down. There goes the agent as well as Darkseer for the second time in this fight. Now Sifla. Gonna be in trouble, the Guna Blaze still hitting, and those bashers are just too painful, and there's a double kill going the way of Iwo. How does that happen? And they're going for it, they're gonna go mid, they need to go mid, they wanna go for barracks. They've got everybody down, they have no buyback to worry about for the life seer because it's still on cooldown, no buyback for the dark seer because he just used it also, and the Shrek also just used his buyback in the previous fight at Roshan. This is their chance for barracks. In the meantime though, it's not over just yet, we have Mihawk getting a demonic purge up on him. Trying to run himself out. Brewmaster doesn't have a split anymore for another 15 seconds. Skewer misses. Disruption was there. Miyak looking for a shackle. Can't get it yet though. Can't find the opening. Oh, he wants to go for Chronosphere, but there's nobody there anymore. It is actually the Brewmaster that went the other way around, so they can't go for barracks anymore. Luckily for a rat, because uh, that Brewmaster, yeah, that Brewmaster ult still there is just doing uh, that much. He still had his teeth also, it's just uh, not using his ulti. A bit awkward to see that happening, that there was actually a massive team fight with Lifestyle just running in there and Brewmaster not even helping out. I wonder why he's being exclamation mark on the Ivern branch. Awkward. Someone wants to sell it. Maybe. They they chased uh, they got the ages. Cheese. Oh what oh he gave the cheese towards the life. So I was gonna say, I thought the cheese was on the brewmaster, but he gave it away. 2K go up on the brewmaster, who hasn't got any new items for a long time, by the way. Uh Life Zero, however, did get some new items, I do believe. He got a cheese, that's it actually. He's got twenty three hundred gold in his inventory. And uh, so far no uh, no bearings down apart from those middle lane. Mid lane racks going down on Gamers University. Regeneration. Let's see what they can do next. If Salt Kuras also ready up on the faces void, he does have that buyback soon again. Not yet though. Needs about 500 gold as you can see. Pretty pretty important in these fights as we have seen that those buybacks make all the difference in the world. There's five heroes actually defending for uh, for Rat. They're not going anywhere. They're just sitting down on the top lane, bottom lane rather, waiting for their opponent team to come or their opponent team to show themselves. I mean, there's one ward left up for the dire side, which is on the top lane, and the lanes are pushed out. I mean, the middle lane is pushed out, top lane is pushed out, and they can't see anything. They, I mean, this is this is their vision. They just don't know where their opponents are. They're all in the dark. And they don't want to be cut out. They smoke up themselves, actually. That's probably the best thing to do. As, um, they're going to try to look for a pick-off. Again, that's the thing that they have to be doing. Both teams should be doing that. Get a pick-off, one or two, and just force a team fight. I mean, last time they got the racks, they picked up the face's void. And that's the one that got them the got them the base. They're going to try to do it again. It's Life Seater that opens the charge. And he's going to fight Iwo there again. Open wounds. There goes the Kronos for instantly. The Shrek's not going to hit, but the BKB is already on. Fable going through. Life Seater in trouble. Bashes going through. Disruption. Help save his life. For now, we do have a reverse polarity, though. It's on two. Stifla already used the cheese. Laguna Blade picks up the Darks here. It is going to be a Brewmaster split that tries to help out as Windrunner goes down. Faces Void actually goes down to the Darks here. Illusions. Darks here will helping out greatly. Telekinesis. Sorry, to Tornado up on the Magnus. And this could be the end. TP out from the Magnus. He does have another reverse polarity for monster. Actually, no, he used two. And this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be another set of racks, I believe. With no phases void and his buyback. Is it actually there? No, he didn't. He doesn't have a buyback. Told you he needed to get it. But doesn't have it. He misses 700 gold. 
It's gonna be Barracks top lane. Barracks. Why doesn't uh, game lie? Game lies! The buyback happened. Barracks will still go down now. Fortification is still there. Actually, could be helping out. Need bashes. Disruption there. Though. Telekinesis up on the life stealer. Luna Blade. Sorry. My strike already doesn't hit anymore. The, the Monarch Purge up on the face of Void. We just uses BKB. I mean, it might be the shortest duration BKB, but... Still BKB on cooldown might be something that the Dire side will find interesting to go in on. And that cheese definitely make a difference. Another rage. Fortification, where is it? Fortification, where is it? There it is. I have to be careful not to overextend. Darkseer gonna come back soon. Telekinesis is up on the Brewmaster Shackle. Gonna be- Oh! They have to go in on this and they know they have to go in this. One down, two down, and now it's Sipla next. Can they get him? Bash, 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 bash. He jumps himself in the creep, doesn't matter. Phases Void bashes again and gets the kill. What a- Oh! What a shackle! What a shackle! I'm not sure if I should call that luck or skill. I mean, can you anticipate on the Brewmaster jumping so that he- The, um- has himself positioned precisely with the Shadow Demon and those, of course, that Battle Fury helping out greatly. Not even the Chronosphere being used for that. Buyback, of course, off on buyback. I mean, that happens. Buybacks on the Brewmaster as well as on the Life Seeder. But hey, that means the Buybacks are on cooldown. That means that if you kill them now, they won't be back up again. In the meantime, Roshan is gonna be up again in 10 minutes. Hey, uh, do you remember what I said at the start of the game that this might be a long day? Oh, oh really? Oh, really? Oh, this might be bad. BKB activated. Can he get them? Can he get one? Who is he gonna chase? Who is he gonna try to chase? There goes a split from the Brewmaster. He has to time walk himself out. Tell himself out. There he goes to the low ground. To his team. Towards the reverse polarity. In the meantime, though, it looks like uh, Lina is not so lucky in the shoe when she's straight thinking about doing there. <laughs> gonna be having to go away. Having to die. Smoke off for the Radiant team. As they find the Mihawk, there goes the stun. Shackle not latching this time, he comes back to the normal self. There goes the Chronosphere, is it? No, reverse polarity upon reverse polarity. Vacuum in there as well. Score up into the high ground. And that is gonna be one down. It's a life signal that drops. Can they get more spin? He's gonna try to go for the Magnus, but Magnus already served his purpose. It's fine. Nice shackle in a spin that dies, and now the Brewmaster tries to TP himself out. I won't dominating. And that is just should be Roshan. Two and a half or half a minute. But no, they can't no, look at the lanes, they're all pushing in. All lanes are pushing in. Maybe they can find themselves a barracks and life seeders TP is on cooldown. TP, I mean buyback. Pause. Why did you pause? Why did you pause? I need to bring some water in the meantime. I'm just shedding too much. Oh really? It's Argentina versus Peru? That's interesting. That's quite nice. It just goes to Cup Americas, but interesting. To be fair, I'm gonna say something that will make me sound biased. But it's pure in self-interest because actually I would like to see game number three even though it is almost 4 a.m. Actually, maybe I don't want to see game number three. Hmm. I'm in doubt. We'll see actually. We'll find out. I wouldn't mind one, but I wouldn't mind sleeping either. So I'm happy with either. But these two teams are uh, pretty interesting to watch once they actually get themselves fighting. Oh! Oh! Wow! That's not gonna be good. Brewmaster dead again. And also is not able to buy back. It's gonna be Boogie that's gonna go down next. Gonna be popping a ghost after to try and stay alive. Power shot will miss. The track stun will miss. Barracks will drop. Fortification will actually go on, so that's something. They still have a chrono screen. Where <laughs> that's the shadow demon going down. And there's gonna be uh, the barracks dropping as well. One set with uh, sets are even right now, of course. As one set of X was already down on the side of the Radiant. 12 seconds before Life Stealer is back. What are they gonna do? Gonna kill off the tier 3 or gonna kill off the tier... Or at least uh, the barracks on the top lane. Looks like the tier 3 is gonna be the case. And the next set of barracks. Magnus now here as well. And that's gonna be two sets of racks going down. Can they go for more? Life Stealer back alive. Oh, but it might not be for long. 
BKB's activated, reverse polarities on the side, vacuums there as well, Sifla going down once more, it will be spin. He's trying to do what he can, but the reverse polarity locks him in place, shockwave going through, but those illusions still doing so much damage. Those should not be underestimated, especially that one, but he's already dead. And that's a GG go next. And that is gonna be a game number three coming up. Gamers University taking game number two, blinking collapse split is still gonna be happening. But it is uh, Gamers University that are still in the running towards becoming Gozi Cup America's next champion. I watch some television sometimes. What a game. No rapiers. Something that I just had to say. Anyways, so this was game number two. We're gonna see game number three to decide which one of these teams will be getting the $500, which one will be getting the $300 for Ghost of Cup Americas. My name is Shiver. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Shiver Gaming. You can subscribe to my, or you can follow me on Twitter, which is twitter.com slash Shiver Gaming. You can like me on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Shiver Gaming. You can follow or subscribe on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Shiver Gaming. We know. Original. You can also turn off adlock if you don't want to do anything of the of the above, or you know, just say thank you, or just don't say anything at all. Doesn't matter. Thank you for watching. Anyway, we will be seeing game number three coming up right after you look at the end screen for a little while longer. If you want to continue watching the end screen, press pause now because we are going to jump ourselves over to the next game. Stick around. Don't go anywhere, and uh, be right back.